come, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you're doing this morning. Thank you for what you're going to do. It's all good. I just gather with the angels this morning. Welcome, your Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus.
let's sing again the first verse. Oh.
God's doing some business this morning. And I want you to present yourself honestly before the very throne of God this morning. Be, be regardless for a moment of the people next to you or of the environment we're in. We're before the throne of heaven. This is real. This is real transaction time. And with the warfare going on, Kurt Kristen mentioned to me a, a beautiful a beautiful play on words that as we worship, this is our worship. And so you know that as we continue to worship in agreement, we're moving together like armies of old in step, pushing back the enemy where there's division, where there's, where there's disagreement, where there's doubts, there are gaps in the line. But I feel like there is a, God has called us into line this morning and we find ourselves moving in concert with him. And for that to continue, God wants to do some business with each one of us this morning. There's never a bad time to do business with God. And this very this morning, before I came into the into the building this morning, I was reading from Romans chapter 13. It says um, all the commandments of God, Romans 13, from about verse about verse 9 and if there's any other commandment it is summed up in this saying you shall love your neighbor as yourself love does no wrong to a neighbor therefore love is the fulfillment of the law do this knowing the time that is already the hour for you to awaken from sleep for now salvation is nearer to us than when we believed the night is almost gone the day is near therefore this is our challenge this morning. Let us lay aside the deeds of darkness, put on the armor of light. Let us behave properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regards to its lusts. Dear friends, that's not so much a slap on the wrist as a briefing from the Holy Spirit to prepare us for what he would have us engage in. We cannot do it if we're dragging foolishness, if we harbor secret sin, if we're unwilling to release, to repent, to forgive. These are the days God has birthed us into. These are the days God has called us to. And to be equal to it requires that we purify our lives, purify our hearts by his grace, but that we cooperate in moments like this and say, Lord, Lord, Thank you for your grace. But Lord, where there's more work to do in me, let it be done in Jesus' name. Father, I release in forgiveness those who have offended. I come to you in, in, in repentance, mighty God, for my own foolishness and for the doubt and for the unbelief, for downcast eyes, for anxiety and stress and strain, Father God, for smallness of vision. Lovely Jesus, you who have called us to be sons and daughters of heaven in a world in desperate need of the influence that we would bring by your spirit. Lord God, have your way in us. Have your way in us. Let me share. A couple of weeks ago, we had uh, visitors who were Ginny and Kathy's cousins. Uh, Bruce and his wife Eunice were here. Unannounced came and Bruce and Eunice have a powerful healing ministry and deliverance ministry that runs globally. They've seen some remarkable deliverances and supernatural encounters with God on behalf of setting his people free. Two things he said on that occasion. One was, he said he's never been to such a welcoming church. Usually you come to the front door and the professional welcomers grab hold of you and put on that plastic smile and and you're in church, but nobody else will talk to you. But for him, he came in and everybody he bumped into, they both bumped to welcome them, said hello to them, ushering them almost all the way to their seat. And I want to commend you guys for that. That is warfare. That is ministering in the, in the, in the atmosphere of heaven. That's being sons and daughters. So well done. Continue to do that. Secondly, as we worshiped on that occasion, he said, oh, never been to a church with, with such amazing power and anointing coming. He said, at first I thought I saw a nuclear reactor over the, over the worship, but then he said, what I really saw were the, the, what is it, the uranium rods of a nuclear reactor, not quite in their sleeves. You know, you put them into the sleeve 
and it generates power, nuclear power. So we have these rods waiting, and he says, it's almost, almost, almost. They're being lowered into their sleeves, into their chamber, and that's where the power is. And I, I believe that on a day like today, what we're discovering is God lowering those rods into the sleeves. He's, he's calling from us, forth from us, more agreement, more power. Even when we sing, as we've just been singing over again, Holy Spirit, you're all I want. Sometimes that can sound pensive or childish. God, give me what I want. But it's an absolute agreement with his desire. It's exactly what he needs of us. That recognition that there's only him. And now we've been singing, Jesus, you're all I want, you're all I need. Yeah. So we look to the captain. And as we all of us look to him, it aligns us, gets us in, 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 at pace with one another, and then we do warfare in worship. So, Father, in Jesus' name, whatever needs to be broken off in this room today, whatever is clinging, whatever remains, Lord, that hinders your preparation for your bride, for your army in these days that we find ourselves, we ask you, Lord, Holy Spirit, do quick work of it. Father, we... We humble ourselves before you and say, there's, there's more that must be done. God, do it in me. Begin with me. Yes. Father, have your way in me. Yes. Take away the doubt and the angst and the grumbling and the, and the criticism and the judgments, Lord God, and the grumpiness in me. Take away the sleepiness from me. Even as Paul wrote in Romans 13, it's time for the awakening. It's time to be awake to the warfare that God has presented this generation. So, Father, have your way in us. Lovely Lord, lovely Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, wash, wash, wash through us. Clean us, prune us, renew us. You remember that word we had from, from, uh, I can't remember her name now. It was the prophetic word we get on the Elijah list all the time. Lana Vosser that God is going to he's going to give us new starts we're going to have dreams we're going to have moments where all of a sudden we wake up and we feel brand new I pray this is a moment like that for some of you this morning brand new born again again refreshed but this time not, not to the same old but to an upgrade have your way Father Yep. Do you all hear that? When the rods, when the nuclear rods go down into the sleeve, God says it's ignition. And he's declared that word over this morning. Ignition, ignition. So all that remains for us to do is to say, is to agree. It's to agree and allow ourselves to be placed into that, that place of generation, of ignition. Not to resist in unbelief or criticism or judgments or uncertainty, but simply to say, Father, have your way, have your way. Lord, fire of God come, power of God come. Bride of Christ, awake and rise in Jesus' name. <laughs>
God this morning for a supernatural breakthrough. Not, not only for, for Israel on the world scene, but certainly and first and foremost for our elder brother, but also for ourselves individually. Breakthrough in areas that have dogged you for the last 10 years, 20 years, 25 years. Things you've been unable to shake. Two years, two weeks. Because God needs us all lifted up to this. This is not, again, this is not God chastising. This is God equipping. This is God coming in across sin, transgression, foolishness in our lives and setting us free to do the works that He has planned from before time that we should walk in them. So I want you to do, as we worship, your hands are free, but I want you to do something we've done many times here at Flame Tree. Cup your hands like you're cupping a, a, a pile of sand in front of you, and you identify what is in your hands right now with the issues that you're aware of that need to be done with, done with and dealt with. Whether it's attitudes, relationships, faith issues, physical issues, whatever it may be, you're holding that. You identify those issues right now. And in response, not to me, not to even the environment, but to, to Jesus himself, who has spoken very clearly this morning, that he would have us free of these things to do our warship in the days ahead of us. We need to be unburdened by these things, set free, ignited, so you take a moment, identify what's in your hands, whatever it may be, whatever it may be. And then in Jesus' name, I want, you to, I want you to see Jesus now coming and slipping his hands underneath yours. He put his hands underneath yours and he's inviting you to give those issues to him. So if you can do it by faith this morning, open your hands and let all of those issues slide out into the hands of Jesus. He will deal with them. They are now His. They are no longer yours. You are now free, as we've been doing this morning, to lift our hands in worship, unencumbered, and declare there is no other God. There is no other King. There is no other Creator no other source of satisfaction and fulfillment, power, purpose. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so we entrust you with those issues, mighty God. And Father, we pledge ourselves this morning when the enemy tries to bring them to mind again or to rob us of freedom or to draw us back down into their influence, we will say no in your name. We will declare, no, in the name of Jesus, I gave those issues to him on that Sunday morning. In the midst of that worship, mighty God, they are no longer mine. I'm no longer bound by them, and I release them. I release them to you, Jesus. They're now yours and not mine. So thank you in its place, mighty God, you give us grace to do the battle that is required of us personally, corporately, nationally, and as a bride of Christ, globally. Dear God, a watershed moment, a watershed moment. Brothers and sisters, know the enemy will try to test you. He will counterattack. He will come back at you with the very things that you've identified this morning as no longer yours. He will try, but you're ready for it. With Paul, we say we are not unaware of his schemes. We know he will try, but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And you are more than equal to resist his overtures. Submit, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You are true sons and daughters of God. And we're
we're going to walk in that holiness in a measure greater than we've known before. Fearless, without anxiety, powerful to perform His purpose because we find ourselves in agreement with Him and filled with Him. God is calling the church to rise up against evil wherever it is found, whether it be in ourselves or our neighbors or our family or our nation or the globe, to combat evil in Jesus' name, that God gets the glory. You are commissioned. You are all of us, whether you're standing in the back of the hall or you're as close to the stage as you can possibly get, all of us are commissioned this morning to the purposes and timing of God. It's not up to you to G yourself up and, and feel it all the time. What I want you to do is mark this moment and recognize this as a, an actual transaction with the Lord of heaven. It's done. Yeah. Everybody say amen. Raise your hands. Be lifted higher.
I could choose, I would probably just stay in the crowd and uh, be there. <laughs> but uh, I felt a feeling to to pick out and uh, just speak out. I don't know what you speak. Um, I just had a feeling to go out, come up here and say something. And then I realized that tugging, it's, it's kind of like a Holy Spirit task, but also um, Holy Spirit or Jesus tried to enter in, in me, tried to respond in me, but uh, my um, so, uh, defense mechanism or like comfort zone, it's blocking, blocking out that presence. And yeah, by doing so, I guess it lifted. The, and the Brother Joe's sharing was really powerful and uh, really lifted up all those fears public speaking fears and fears of being embarrassed and all those things. And here I am. Thank you. Should ask, does anybody else need to just step up on the stage and say nothing? <laughs> Sometimes we overdo the words. It was interesting as Joel got us to hold our hands open so that we could unburden ourselves of everything that, you know, is restricting us, is blocking us from what I believe the Lord wants to give us this morning. So I think what he wants us to do is actually open our hands up again now that we've unburdened ourselves from every restriction, every blockage of the enemy, and God wants to fill us up with the inheritance that he has for us every restriction gone and so every dream every vision every blessing whether it's financial whether it's physical spiritual or emotional god wants to release that to us this morning so, so um for people who have um find it hard to um, picture G Jesus' hands under your hands and you open them up and you let it fall through. I got um, a picture of like an aircraft, you know, one of those really big war airplanes and the bottom comes open and all the cargo falls out and goes into oblivion. Well, if you can't picture Jesus' hand, just picture that, that you open your hands up and it comes out the back of the plane and just goes into oblivion. but I, I don't understand the symbolism of it and it's this pure white cloak and it's be, and it's got a big fluffy rim around the round its neck and around the, the brim of it but on the back is this blue star of David and it's like God's placing that over some people's shoulders here and I'm, I get a feeling like it's it's like being part of the family you know yeah Uh, sorry, just two things. Yeah, one. Uh, yeah, that vision comes to me as of um, yeah, like receiving a mantle of the Lord. But also, when Tony was speaking, I don't think it's just a handful that we're putting out. I'm wondering whether it's like that, and it's almost like we are sieve, and He'll fill us up to to capacity. Yeah, we don't just need a handful. He wants the whole of us, uh, the whole of us filled. Amen. Let's not limit the Lord by our limited experience. And I'm not talking just about you and your life. I'm talking about the life of the church for the last several hundred years. But for moments of revival, most believers have lived under par. Uh, Kristen. Yeah. Thanks. This week I had trouble praying for these hostages and the situation going on. And I was really inflating fear and trauma and every other thing above the name of Jesus. 
and I asked the Lord for help and how to pray, and he showed me. It's the um, Rapha gate. He is Jehovah Rapha, and every single person that walks through that gate is healed in Yeshua's name. You're aware that the hostages that are being released, all of them come through the Rapha gate, which is the southern end of Gaza, right? And the Rapha, Yahweh Rapha is the Lord God, our healer. Rapha means he. So we, yes, we've all been praying against trauma and, and that they would come back whole. Yeah. And Kristen is feeling that our praise, this is our Rapha gate, so that as God wants to deal with issues in our lives, he doesn't just stand back, and this is what I would add to that, he doesn't stand back with his hand on the hips saying, now do what is right and repent, but he heals us of our brokenness. He heals us of our weaknesses and our foolishness and our sin. He heals us. He is Jehovah Rapha, and we're coming as we worship, we're coming through that that healing point. This is God's purpose. Purpose today. Yeah. Um, I just saw the Lord's heart. It was just beautiful. He was, his heart, he was in heaven. He was just releasing his heart today. It was like love, just his love. And over everyone here, he released a new heart. And it was like, I'm drawing you in with my love. And I'm also connecting the church in a new level of love. So it was just like, um, you know, everything we've been talking about, it's like he was dissolving them. There was an anointing of love to draw us into that place. And it was, it was his heart. And, and it was like the, the hearts were just coming out of heaven and landing on each one of us and uniting us in ourselves, but also uniting the bride. So it was just, you know, it was just like, it's like love conquers all, that whole thing. It was just so beautiful. Anyway, I just want to bless that over everyone. Amen. It's like God's emojis, hearts, love hearts, and Star of David. You know, the Star of David in Hebrew is Magen David, the shield of David. And I reckon what's, what's going on is several things with that mantle. It feels comfortable, first of all. It's nice to have something settle on your shoulders that is comfortable and not scratchy and beautiful. But the Magen David on the back of it is indicating that we enjoy God's ownership. He has marked us and he, oh, he protects and is jealous for that which he's marked. Sion meaning marked. Zion means marked. Shield of David covers you, covers you. And it's like uh, Isaac said earlier, we're all David here this morning as we worship. So I think God's just saying, yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right, yeah. Pete? When we were worshipping earlier, I came out the front because it was for Israel, it was for Nambor, it was for us. But I saw Holy Spirit ignite us to go. And then all these other words about letting go of things and being filled with the presence of Him and our destiny. It's in preparation for him to go. David dropped off, you know, the armor that he was given. It didn't fit. We fit with the king. Hallelujah. I also saw as we're here this morning too uh, that we are dispatching, or God's dispatching angel armies and they're going everywhere. You just see them like lights going out everywhere. So the Lord is in our praise and in our surrender and in our obedience, He is dispatching the angel armies on behalf of everything and everyone. We're st starting, first of all, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We probably need to say that every morning we get up. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. When David said, where is this Philistine that defies the Lord's armies? He was declaring that he was the righteousness of God because he was metering out righteous punishment to the enemy of God. We are the righteousness of God. We are to, to stand firm in that position. God has invested in us his character and all the power in his name 
because if we don't succeed, it's a blight on his name. He has all power and all his character invested in that name. We are Christians and he is going to see to it that we do well. He is going to see to it that we do well. We dare to call ourselves the sons of God and he will see that we do well. We have a position in Christ. We don't have to come to church every Sunday thinking, oh, it's been a bad week, I feel this, I feel that. No, it's about position. And we are the righteousness in Christ, Christ Jesus. We are the righteousness of God. We are in a position. Amen. Amen. So, Father, everything you've done this morning, I pray you put a seal upon it consciously. Got this earlier. God visits man and he walks in our midst. Three times. God visits man and he walks in our midst. God visits man and he walks in our midst. And then I saw his hand come down to, to each one individually and he's, he's taking our hands, taking our hands and bringing reassurance. It's like a conversation going on between each, between God and each one of us. Such a holy moment here this morning. We thank you, Father God, that you come and you visit us. And that you take our hands and that you communicate your love. It's a communication backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And you're ministering into each of our lives, cleaning our lives and reassuring us of our stance and our faith and the love that you have for us and all that Jesus did for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Good morning, church. I just want to expand on um, what we were just talking about, the Rapper Gate. And as I was standing there, I heard the Lord say again for the second time this morning, I'm still singing over you. Um, <laughs> um, and so he's brought us broken through the Rapper Gate, but he's sending us back out and he's going to break our hearts for what breaks his heart. And, he, and with us, we're going to bring people back through the Rafa Gate. So be prepared to be broken again. If the first time it was hard, the second time it's probably going to be worse. But it's for his glory and his purpose and for his goodness and he is healer and he's going to bring the multitudes back with you. Thanks, Julie. Um, I want to say that I was healed while we was uh, worshiping. Uh, it was a sound of uh, many, many waters. I don't know if you hear that, but it was a beautiful sound of many strings, like the string of the guitars. And, and then the Holy Spirit manifest in this beautiful sound of that electric guitar there. And, um, and it was saying, Abba, I love you. Yahweh, I need you. And, uh, and it was so clear, and I received healing. Amen. 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 Um, yeah, I just wanted to talk into a couple of things that everyone's already said, um, but that God's really wanting to address our fears, and often our fears that we um, we sort of go, I'm afraid that I'll be alone or unknown, but actually, what we even more deeply fear is that we will be known, we will be seen. And that's exactly what God actually wants for us. He wants us to be that light. He wants us to be that city on the hill. And just as Lily came up and was like, I feel like God's tugging at me to do something. He's actually got that on each of us. And as we step into that and say, God, I do want you to be the light shining through me. And that means that I will be seen. I will be known for who I am in you. We've got to just respond to it and say, God, I accept that is my call. Yeah, um, 
just leaning into like the small still voice you know and the way that God speaks to us uh, yesterday just two random times God shared this with me and um, says the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace you know this blessing that um, I mean I don't really know but I guess I've heard that you know there was generations before us that were unsure about being a bless me club you know because it just seems like we're being greedy but the Lord wants to bless us and make his face shine upon us so we can give that blessing to the world you know be a blessing to the world and without his face shining upon us like we just have our striving and our own strength um, I just think after everything being said today just the Lord is here to pour his self out upon us so that like yeah we will know we will know him so that the world will know yeah and when you say that uh, lift up your hands to the, and give all the issues in life to the Lord. And I saw in the spirit, the hands of the Lord has been here. And honey, white rug. <laughs> I saw in the spirit, his hands is reaching our hands. And until, un, until here only, and the hanging white rugs, and he reached us, our hands. That's all. I saw that in the spirit. When, when you said that, lift up your hands and give all the issues in your life to the Lord. And I saw his hands reaching our hands until here only in the white rock. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. Owen? Give it up. Let it go. Amen. That's a good amen. Give it up. Let it go. Yeah, Mark. I just want to, uh, when we were starting to worship, um, I just saw a picture of the Lion of Judah roaring over the heavenlies and over Israel particularly. And then it was like the sound waves of God were going over the world and he was declaring his goodness and his mercy and I was reading an Esther this time, you know, this week, and it's, you know, for such a time as this, and, and as Joel was saying, the, the Lord is really raising up the church. He's saying, wake up. This is the time for such a time as this. This is the time. And um, he's really calling us to, to take up the shield, to take up the sword, and to, to wage war um, all around the world and to bring the captives in. Just as the captives are coming in today in Israel and, and God is setting people free, God is setting people free, he's going to set people free in our communities and they're going to come through those doors. One of the little refugees that we had in our fridge who was nine years old got rescued. Isn't that great? <laughs> And Elizabeth, the family you were praying for, also? Um, we had been praying for the Munda family. There was um, the father, Abraham, who unfortunately hasn't been released, but his um, wife, Ruthie, and um, their daughter, uh, Kareen, and the grandson, Obed, um, the three of them have been released. It was wonderful. <laughs> just been reminded over the last few days that the Lord is perfect love, a love that casts out all fear and it's not necessarily always a, a doting sort of love but a love that cares for and shows us the right way to go and, and, and that does cast out all fear. If you, if you live in the perfect love of the Lord then fear has no hold on you. Amen. So in Jesus name we stand in the gap for the remaining hostages that they would be that they would enjoy the supernatural peace of God in the midst of their broken circumstances let there be no hopelessness let hope rise within their spirits that is supernatural that is that has no reasonable source other than the Lord himself other than the Lord Yeshua Jesus ministering peace 
to his broken people. Mighty God, and may you get glory. Father, we pray that there'll be no more delays with, the, with, the, with, with other hostages, but we also pray that this delay gives no advantage to Hamas. Mighty God, in Jesus' name, that these delays, these so-called ceasefires will backfire on Hamas, and it will cost Israel no more than had she gone forward to, to destroy this enemy in your name. Mighty God, we, we are unapologetic, Father God, that you would set the world free, that you would set Gaza free, that you would set the willing amongst the Palestinian population free, that you would set Israel free from this evil, from this, this presumptuous pretender, this Hamas in Jesus' name. And Lord, will you get glory? And we know that as we pray this mighty God, it's not in contradiction to your love and perfection. You are all always perfect in every way, and all of your attributes are at work all the time. And so even now, your warfare is administered. Your, your vengeance, which is yours, Lord God, is administered in perfect love, perfect mercy, perfect grace. It's not one or the other. We, it's a mystery to us, Father, because we're either or, but you're not either or. You are who you are always. And we worship you this morning, mighty God. A sermon on the... No, I want to give my sermon. <laughs> oh, I love it. Honestly, you know, Jesse, astonishing. Um, and all of you, too, you know, when we get in the presence of the Lord, we, we are just activated and we are, we're ignited. We're ignited. Oh, I don't know. Oh, oh, this is something Tanya gave me this morning, too. Tanya said, no doubt you get this, but it struck me when I looked at the numbers in the hostage exchange, some civilians for more criminals. A dozen years ago, you remember one IDF soldier for more than 1,000 in prison were released. It seems absurd, yet is not Israel in the same way acting like their God? Do you remember in Isaiah 52, toward the end, it says, um, just as, um, well, here, just as many were astonished at you, my people, so his appearance was marred more than any man. So Jesus has accomplished our great salvation, but Israel is still required to exemplify or to be a model of the cost of that salvation year after year after year. And so Israel is acting just like God, who gave one perfect son in exchange for us all. And, uh, and yes and amen. And so... Let it be, Lord God, that as this prisoner exchange continues, that the gospel is being preached, that the gospel is being, is being spread, that the, the word of truth is coming by your spirit in unseen ways, in, even through the darkness, mighty God. You are administering your truth, your love, the wonder of who you are and the wonder of what you have done for humanity, mighty I don't know, praise God. Actually, no, I want to give you some of this. I can't give it all to you this morning. But again, time, these are time-sensitive issues. And I want, to, I want to go ahead and put those up. Thanks, Nani. Uh, and this is what the Lord has been concluded with today. Isn't this basically what Mark just said? So we've already had the sermon. These are times of trouble, and not just for Israel, but globally. We're seeing things that are astonishing. So I don't have time, and I don't need to give you the laundry list of all the brokenness in the world and all the foolishness and all the what-are-you-kidding-me moments that are going around the world right now globally, politically, socially, um, uh, in terms of different warfare, uh, all, any number of things. And so what, what I think God is wanting us to do is wake up to the fact that that this is a watershed moment, that we're not, do not allow ourselves to be like the, the, the crab in the boiling water, that all of a sudden we're cooked and we didn't realize we were being cooked. What God is inviting us into is to wake up now and participate and be part of what he is doing in the earth in a, in a remarkable way. 
but it requires the, the work that we've done this week and also last week, if you remember, and even the week before, all these weeks of late, God has been dealing with us personally, even as he employs us corporately to stand in the gap for our elder brother, which we'll continue to do. Yeah. So even now, with the rise in anti-Semitism around the world, there's almost a 100% rise in the anticipated aliyah of Jews from the world going back to Israel. And I find it remarkable that in the midst of warfare, it's when young, Israel, young Jewish people around the world are saying, now it's time. And they go back, they make aliyah, they land in Ben-Gurion, they immediately are processed, and they go into their training for the IDF. And in three months' time, they'll be, they'll be put to work. It's a remarkable day. It's a remarkable day. And so if Israel, again, in the natural, is being called by God to rise up against all reason to go back to a land embroiled in warfare, and it looks at this point, may it be God, not true, but it looks very possibly that it could still, we haven't peaked yet, and we've understood that the, the real battle of Gaza is in southern Gaza, where even the, the, the larger tunnels that can, you can drive a truck through are discovered, and Hezbollah has not even begun. May they just... May they just fizzle and die in Jesus' name. All right? But if, Ali, if, if Aliyah is rising, what do you think that means for the church? It means mornings like this where God is, is, is speaking over his bride to rise up as well, to make a determined choice in the face of all, against all odds, in the face of all reason, to rise up and dare to believe the things about which we have sung for 500 years. And it's time to be a people truly of faith who live out the things that we declare we believe. And that's not wrist slapping. I think there is a, there's a timing of the Lord in all of this that he simply said, and we've heard it before, it is time. So he's breathing out what? Grace that enables us to do the very things that we're shouting about this morning. We can't do it. We can't do it um, by geeing ourselves up. All right, by getting ourselves excited, you can't sustain that more than a day or two. Right? It is the Lord who's breathing on the fire about which we've sung this morning. So, Lord, have your way in Jesus' name. Now, um, Andy and Shani, where I just saw you guys. When, when do you go back? Okay, okay. So we'll do your report another day. All right, maybe next week. All right. I do want to hear it, and I want to celebrate it. We want to agree with it. But today is a, is a day that um, God has hijacked. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I, love it. I love it when God hijacks the mornings, all right? So look, um, I, it's, it's already quarter to 11, so I'm, I'm not going to um, drag you through this at triple speed. There's no point. Um, I do want to say this, though, and maybe I'll, I'll go over this again some other time. But what was occurring to me this week, again, and I've taught for many, many years, I've taught on Psalm 83. And most of you are familiar with Psalm 83. And we see um, the nations around Israel standing in with one mind, it says, which has never happened before, coming together in one mind. I mean, we've had battles of, of, against Israel at her inception with the War of Independence and other battles. Um, 67, 73, the, 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 the Lebanon and wars, both of them, but in none of those wars were all of the surrounding nations of one mind. You know, we're have, what we're seeing now in an unprecedented way, as you, you're, you're aware of this because I've shared it before and you, you've also understood it on your own, that Hezbollah and Hamas and Iran all working in concert in, a, in an unprecedented way that is against the grain of historic Islam where they are at each other's throats. And so that is something we're seeing that allows us to go to Psalm 83 and see this is unfolding now. But the, what, I wanted, what I really wanted to share with you, I'm just going to jump forward here. Can I just run through some of this? Let's, let's not do any of this. Okay, there's the surrounding nations. I might get back to this another Sunday. But here, the, 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 the spirits involved, okay? Now, if Israel is doing physical battle, and she is, she's having to rise up and find herself shoulder to shoulder 
risking everything to push back the enemy and destroy that which is evil in the enemy, physical enemy. Again, our role will be the spiritual battle, and I know you know that, but it also helps us to identify the enemy with which we are engaged. And so the territory, the, the spirits I, I have identified, and, and, and most of you have seen these already before, you've understood this, but in prayer on uh, Thursday night when we were gathered around here, this came to me with, again, a great fresh anointing, especially the top two. Um, Dagon is the territorial spirit of Gaza. As you recall the story of Samson, when, or, and also when, when the Ark of the Covenant was stolen or taken by the Philistines and taken to their cities, placed in the temple of their god Dagon, the, the Ark simply had to be there. Do you remember the result? And the statue of Dagon fell over twice. Third time, head and hands broken off. The ability to strategize and the ability to, to, to exercise that strategy removed. The power removed from Dagon, that territorial spirit. Now, that spirit is eternal, just like you and I are eternal. And he hasn't necessarily gone anywhere other than underground. And so Dagon, or whatever demonic force he is presuming to be, is still resident in that, in that area. And we've seen that. We've seen that. And so we're, we're fighting against the territorial spirit of Gaza, and we're doing it in the same way that David or, or, or that the armies of it or that the God of Israel managed on that occasion. We simply have to bring God's presence to bear, and the enemy cannot stand. And so we're even... Here's the wonder of it, guys. We sit here on the opposite side of the world and we declare what God has spoken in his word and it rises into the jet stream of his prophetic purpose, circumnavigates half the globe, lands where he prescribes it to land, and it does not return to him void or powerless. And it does render the enemy, once again, powerless. As we declare the sovereignty of God over the presumptuous pretenders like Dagon who thinks he's got some territory that belongs to him. No, in Jesus' name. The other spirit we're having to deal with is Amalek, which I have identified, and so have you, as an underlying, if not the underlying, demonic force behind antisemitism. Because wherever Amalek is discovered, the attempt is to destroy the Jewish people and to take the land of Israel for themselves. Those two issues are the MO of the spirit of Amalek. It was the first nation to resist Israel when she came out of Egypt in the Exodus. And God determined them that they should be absolutely destroyed. Failing that, um, uh, we've seen all sorts of, of, of mischief done by those associated with the spirit of Amalek down through Israel's history down until today. So we're seeing not just a war in Gaza, but this is the astonishing thing, that as Israel suffers unspeakably, undeniably, the world is rising up in hatred of Israel. And we're having these unbelievable, un, it's, it, it, astonishing demonstrations that in effect are pro-Hamas and anti-Israel, anti-Jew. All around the world. And as much as there have been some pushbacks, some of you saw the Maoris doing the Hakka at the Palestinian, uh, the pro-Palestine uh, rally the other day. And wasn't it powerful? And it, let it be a metaphor for the church rising up in strength, in agreement, shoulder to shoulder, moving in concert, as the Lord reminded us this morning that we are in battle, we are in warfare, we're doing the work of the kingdom, but we do it in concert with one another, we do it in agreement, we do it with blessing, we do it not feeding our own souls or our own flesh, but the purposes and strategies and timing of God. And so... We push back, and even with the pushback, it seems like it's, 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 it's um, metastasizing in the world. The more you push back against this anti-Semitic spirit, this spirit of Amalek, it metastasizes like a cancer, and it pops up here in unexpected places in, in all the universities across the United States. It's, it's here in Australia. It's all across Europe. It seems, to be, it seems to be growing faster than it can be dealt with, but God will have his day. God will have his way. God will pronounce judgment. God has already pronounced judgment. So I just want you to understand when we worship here, we're pushing back against a small, presumptuous pretender like Dagon. We're pushing back against a very timeless enemy of the purposes of God, Amalek, the spirit of Amalek. 
And with Iran's involvement, you've got the spirit of Persia or the Prince of Persia mentioned in Daniel 10 and the Prince of Greece also mentioned there that also speak into this situation because the Prince of Persia is that spirit. In my mind, the, the religious spirit, which is represented by the Ayatollahs of Iran today, that hateful religious spirit that controls to death any people that come under its sway. And what... And that same religious spirit, I'm not going to say necessarily the prince of Persia, but a, a related religious spirit that has kept the church controlled unto death for generations, barring the moves of God, the omnipotence of God and his spirit when he decides to move, and the remnant of faithful amongst the bride of Christ right around the globe, down through history to this day. And if the, if the spirit of Persia or the prince of Persia is a religious spirit, the, the prince of Greece, I would identify as that spirit of humanism because out of that we have the philosophers. So we have the philosophers exalting humanity as the, as the, as the end of all things, the measure of all things. And then you've got the ayatollahs, that spirit of religious control mixed in with a, a hatred of the Jewish people and a desire to, to occupy the very piece of real estate that God himself has said, this in particular, in a peculiar way, belongs to me, and I've called it Zion. He's marked it as belonging to him. And you've heard me say before, woe to the power, the principality, or the person that presumes to touch that which God owns. He owns that real estate. He owns the people whom he has designed to live there, the Jewish people the sons of Israel, and he owns you and I, whom he has also marked as belonging to this wonderful, glorious, unfathomable, redemptive strategy that we're participating in this morning. Yeah. This morning. I don't know what else I've got on here. Let's see. So believers rise up with Israel in times of trouble. I would have taken you to, in fact, I'm going to, look at I've got, oh, I've got five minutes. No, I'm just going to, I'm just going to give you a little bit here. Uh, let me back up here. Oh, what did I miss? No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. Did I miss every... Oh, I must have... Sorry. Oh, you get to see that amazing stuff again. Let's see. Here we go. Ah. Well, no. Having identified those spiritual forces, let's all read Ephesians 6, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the wild world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. And then the disciples of the Lord, including you and I, can declare before in his presence this morning from Luke 10 with me, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And so we say, in Jesus' name, let Dagon, let Amalek, let Persia, let Greece, all of those spiritual forces, all of those pretenders, all those um, imposters come down in Jesus' name. We declare the victory of the cross. We declare the power of the blood of Jesus over the purposes of God, over the word of God that we've sent forth, over the people of God, first chosen Israel, and also you and I, the younger brother in this family that is uh, over which God holds no favorites, where in the family there is neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, slave nor free, but all equal before the throne, Lord, because of the work that you have done on the cross, forming us into one new man. But we declare with absolute confidence that your purposes will prevail. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Um, oh, there's a lot of good stuff on here. Uh, no, I'm going to. I'm going to have to, I'll, oh, oh, I wanted to, there were some good examples this morning. I, um, as, as Israel's rising up, right, so the church is rising up. We're all feeling it. We're having gatherings like we're having today, last week, the week before, with Pastor Stu, when he just stepped into the fire and the glory, and, 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 and we're, we're seeing this happening as our, 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 our norm, can I say that, without, without becoming cavalier, or over familiar. I remember it was a couple of weeks ago. Somebody said, well, I don't know who said this, but they said, you've got to come having worshipped all week. What was it? Was that? 
Was that Stu? Yeah, you gotta have you gotta have been worshiping all week and you come here to continue worshiping. You don't come here to worship cold turkey. Right? And so we're seeing we're seeing this this raising of the bar. This raising of our own expectations. God speaks his purpose and says, this is what I want you to do. But then it's his grace that brings the possibility within us that says, oh, we can do that. We don't make this stuff up. And again, this is not us ramping ourselves up to, to some religious fervor. This is us, as we heard this morning, <laughs> I just got to get up on stage. Right? I just got to obey. I just got to, I have to move. I have to do. But that, you got to understand, that, that is birthed from the throne of God. From him and through him and to him are all things. Nothing originates with us. We haven't just decided this is a good day to finally be the man I was always meant to be. So, darn it, I'm going to be better. You try that, you're going to fall over tomorrow. <laughs> what you're doing, what we believe we are doing, we're responding to the Lord, the Holy Spirit. And with that response comes grace to obey, grace to overcome. Grace to be everything God requires us to be so that we can do the warfare that he places in front of us. And we're only just begun. We've only just begun. Not just for Israel, but also for the world and for Australia. And so if Israel is rising up, so too we rise up. I know that in, uh, King, uh, in uh, Chris Mitchell's Kingdom Initiatives gathering. There have been just they were scheduled to stop a couple weeks ago, but it it was just so good when they when the that last gathering and I'm speaking out of turn because I haven't been there, but the reports I've received is that it's so good they said we can't stop so they keep gathering and God has taken it and shifted the focus, and I think it was once again Isaac who declared this to be a house of miracles and that came with a dumping of God's anointing on that gathering at the time confirming that God has more for us. There's a rising up physically for Israel, spiritually for the church. I know we've seen the same thing on the women's meetings with, with Ginny, that God has just, well, consistently, but increasingly taken them over and allowed them to be places where the women are marinated in the presence and purpose and pleasure of God and they're learning to speak out and declare out and to prophesy and to and to believe for more and they're coming into healing and it's it's wonderful to see but these are just the first ripples of what God is doing for his bride some of us have made peace with the idea well to be the bride of Christ this is as about as good as it gets right you know, we just got to endure. Yes, we have to endure to the end. And those that endure with me will reign with me, Jesus said. But at the same time, is this as good as it gets where we just kind of stumble and fumble and have good weeks and bad weeks and good days and bad days and doggone, I wish there was more and that, 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 that. Is that as good as it gets? I see a lot of your heads shaking. No, because we dare not surrender to that, that, that lowered expectation of who God is. We dare not. There's more. We're going to come into a day when we're going to look back on these days and scratch our heads and go, why did we wait so long? How come, it, how come we, were, we settled to live at that level for so long? And again, this isn't just trying to get everybody excited. I'm, you, I hope you're discovering you're resonating from here. Not necessarily from here, because from here I'm going, I don't know how that's going to happen. Go, God. But from here I'm going, amen, 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 amen. Yeah. Up here I'm going, I just keep getting in the way. God, you're going to have to move my brain aside. Not, you know, we don't kiss our brains goodbye, but we, they serve the spirit, not the other way around. So rise up. All right, let me just read a few scriptures here that aren't on the PowerPoints. Maybe one day I'll come back and do that. But listen. Uh, oh, I was reading in, in Zechariah 2, because we I, I think I started up this morning on Zechariah 2, and I skipped right over it. I'm just going to read that quickly, because there's a wonderful 
It ends beautifully. Ah, come on, Zechariah, there you are. Here we go, Zechariah 2. Well, it says in verse 11, many nations will join themselves to the Lord in that day and will become my people. Do you know that's the only place in the Tanakh where Gentiles are called God's, called God's people? It's the only place where we discover that God's purpose is that you are his people as well as Israel. Not alongside of, but in with. Same family. Many nations will join themselves. That's what we're doing when we pray for Israel. We are joining the family. We're joining with Israel. We're joining in God's purposes for his first chosen people. Then I will dwell in your midst, and you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. The Lord will possess Judah as his firstborn in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. And then for the last verse of chapter 2, verse 13, Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. I, I believe we can see that God is aroused from his holy habitation with the evil that has been released upon the world and amongst the nations of the globe. And God is not going to sit idly by and allow this to happen. Isaiah 42. Let them give, verse 12, let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise to the coastlands. The Lord will go forth like a warrior. He will arouse his zeal like a man of war. He will utter a shout. Yes, he will raise a war cry. He will prevail against his enemies. And it goes on to say, I have kept silent for a long time. I've kept still and restrained myself. Now, like a woman in labor, I will groan. I will both gasp and pant. I will lay waste the mountain and hills and wither all their vegetation. I will make the rivers into coastlands and dry up the ponds. I will lead the blind by a way they do not know. In paths they do not know, I will guide them. I will make darkness into light before them. May it be, Father, for the remaining hostages. And rugged places into plains. These are the things I will do, and I will not leave them undone. They will be turned back and be utterly put to shame who trust in idols who say to molten images, you are our gods. And Father, this morning, those who trust in Dagon, those who, who come under the sway of Amalek, those who are held captive by the demonic force masquerading as Allah of Islam, oh, Father, we pray, first of all, defeat them. Defeat those who are in cooperation with these demonic pretenders. And then, mighty God, as you declare again and again in your word, once you are recognized, let them know that you are God. Let salvation come, Father God, to the remnant. Let salvation come to the survivors. Let an awakening come to millions and millions of Muslims as they discover the real nature of the demonic spirit to which they have become attached. Mighty God. And we ask that you, Lord Yahweh, brood over Israel, keep her safe, give wisdom where wisdom is lacking, give strength where strength is waning. Mighty God, give joy and hope where all has gone to darkness and despair. Dear God, dear God, do something that only you can do. Miraculous, work, wonder-working God that all the world will know that you alone are Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Lord bless you guys. And as, uh, was it, who read, oh, as Josh read out, Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We place the name of God upon each one of you and your families, in Jesus' name.